pleasure to be here. We're joined with uh, many of the officials that represent New Bedford here, and, and I'd like to uh, introduce the mayor, uh, who, if we can get all the city councilors here, Mayor, you might know who's here, but... Uh, city uh, Councilor Steve Martins is here, I Congressman, see. and uh, I think, uh, Representative Bob Cazera is here as well. And Chris Markey is here. Chris Markey is here, Chris yep. Markey. Well, if you can come in, squeeze in. Christian and Select with Dave Bonar is here. We go squeeze in, make ourselves yeah, comfortable. Russo, great to see you. Good morning. I'd just like to have the mayor on the behalf of the city say a few words. Well, uh, thank you. Well, let me, um, uh, my, my words are, are brief, and uh, I, I'm so happy this day has come, and I'm so happy for uh, the, the work that Congressman Keating and his staff have done uh, to make, um, make good, as much good as possible, in a very uh, difficult situation. Um, it's, it's, it's uh, the, what happened to the Ford household is, in my mind despicable that someone would go in and not just burglarize a home but to steal something as sentimental and as as heartfelt um, sympathetic um, excuse me uh, sentimental as uh, as his son's purple heart and uh, through the hard work of Congressman Ke Congressman Keating's office and the congressman himself um, we are hopefully closing a uh, an, an open wound uh, here the, the wound uh, will never be uh, closed and uh, you know it's on these occasions when you know, you, <coughs> a parent and a family loses a loved one uh, who pays the ultimate sacrifice on behalf of his country that I, I'm at least reminded of uh, Abraham Lincoln's famous letter to Mrs. Bixby of Boston in which he uh, said that uh, I, um, uh, I, I pray that our Almighty Father will assuage the anguish of your bereavement and leave you only the cherished memory of the loved and lost and the solemn pride that must be yours to have laid uh, so costly a sacrifice upon the altar of freedom. Uh, those words came down from President Lincoln uh, to a woman who lost five sons in the war some 150 years ago, and they ring true today uh, in our current wars for families like the Fords who have lost a loved one uh, who served, who wasn't drafted, who served, who volunteered, served and went out uh, in, on, on patrol and was doing his job for his country. Uh, so Mr. Ford and the Ford family, let me just say um, I am uh, uh, deeply grateful for the efforts of Congressman Keating's office on behalf of the entire city of New Bedford and uh, uh, we're all with you and we're happy that this, this day has come and hopefully um, uh, this will this will be some measure of uh, of, um, uh, of of a solve on your uh, on your um, your anguish. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. Well, I talked to um, Mr. Ford as uh, we were coming in, and, and he'll say, uh, "You have no idea how much this means to me." And I was going to share uh, a little of my uh, growing up because I have a clue. Uh, my uncle uh, was killed uh, in action, and I remember my grandmother uh, when I was a young boy uh, bringing me upstairs in her home and pulling out uh, a box that had some of these medals uh, and had uh, keepsakes uh, that were his. And I remember at that age just how important these are. Uh, Lance Corporal Michael Ford uh, enlisted uh, when he heard the commander-in-chief calling people to arms uh, when there was terrorism uh, being brought forth in this world and he answered that call and his 18th birthday he was on a plane uh, and sadly uh, was killed in Iraq uh, with an improvised explosive device uh, and it, it came through that that young generation that answered that call uh, will be in our minds forever. Okay. This is something that, uh, as we approach Memorial Day, uh, we should, is more reinforced. It's a time in our country when we all look back uh, and try and remember everyone that gave great sacrifice. Uh, I was given a letter in advance of this from some of his friends uh, in Charlie Company. And it was a letter addressed to you, Mr. Ford, from Major Michael uh, Del Palazzo. And he didn't serve directly uh, with Michael, 
but he did serve in Charlie Company shortly after he was killed. And he wanted you to know uh, that the representatives from Charlie Company uh, will always be his brothers. And he wanted me to share with you this coin, because you had uh, coins that were uh, taken away. And this is one from his brothers uh, in Charlie Company. I'd like to present this to you. And I'd like to forward his letter to you as well. Thank you. You know, uh, people can do desp despicable acts. People can do thoughtless, insensitive acts in this world. Uh, but there are always the rest of us. And in this country, the rest of us means something. Uh, in this country, uh, we understand that memories will always be there and never can be taken away. But we also understand the importance of these medals. This week in Congress, we passed the law uh, through the House on the Sto Stolen Valor Act, when people tried to profit from these medals. And that will become law shortly. Uh, so the people that try to do these things, or try and sell them, or try and uh, not use authentic medals, will be punished uh, with the law. But I also want to tell you this, that uh, we all know, approaching Memorial Day, that how, the, how foolish that act was. They can never take away Michael's memory. They can never take away what he did for his country. And I'd like to uh, uh, ask uh, Commander Brawley, who was so instrumental in getting us this, to come forth. And I'd like to present you uh, with something else that can't be taken away. Uh, the service that he gave, his life that he gave, uh, the patriotism he showed at the age of 18, uh, and his sad death at the age of 19, uh, is something that will never be taken away from a grateful country. I want to present you with this. Thank you. Thank you. This is my most prized possession of my son. This is the most sentimental possession I own. At the time of the robbery, I thought this was stolen. And because I was so overcome with the pain of having, thought, having lost three triple hearts, I didn't even notice it was hanging on the wall in the dining room until the very next morning. I must have passed it at least 20 or 30 times. And I discovered this morning that the gentleman from New Jersey who sent it to me soon after my son's death is actually a World War II veteran. He contacted the Marine officer who was in charge of taking care of my son's uh, burial and first sergeant Todd Parisi drove all the way down to New Jersey to pick it up so it wouldn't get destroyed in the mail. Um, I'm happy to report that First Sergeant Todd Parisi is now Sergeant Major Todd Parisi. He was one of the people who contacted me uh, after this uh, incident went on the news. I received uh, six phone calls from the men that he served with, served with all over the country. I received uh, also uh, six emails from people. And I'd like to say, thank Christine Hager of Channel 4. She sent me some emails that people had sent her, willing to donate their Purple Hearts to me. It's been amazing the response I've gotten uh, since this incident happened. I can't thank the American public enough. I thought for a time that the people in his company and Charlie Company had forgotten about me because uh, last time I had any association with anybody was at the memorial service they had at 29 Palms in California in December of 2006. Um, the response has been overwhelming. I feel that now that I am a part of their family. I'm thankful for the sacrifice my son gave to his country. It was unexpected on my behalf. As the congressman said earlier, um, 
We were sitting home one night watching President Bush on the TV, and the very next day he showed up after school with the Marine recruiter in tow. He did spend his 18th birthday on the plane going to boot camp. He came home a few times, and he always made sure he went back to his uh, high school at New Bedford Volk. Um, all four of my children who have graduated from Volk all took culinary, and they're well respected there. Michael, upon leaving for the last time that I would ever see him, told me that he had a, a life insurance policy for a million dollars. The very last words I ever spoke to him were, I don't care if it's 10 times that amount, I'd rather have you home. I found out after his death, <clears throat> he knew he wasn't coming back. And that just blew my mind. He was dating a young lady from church, and he told the young lady's mother he knew he would not be coming back alive, and she tried to convince him otherwise. But as we know, he was sent to Iraq on April 26th, I mean, April, March 28th, and he was killed on April 26th. When they came to my door at 12.30 in the morning on April 27th, I didn't even let them tell me he was killed. I knew right away. The first words out of my mouth was, he hasn't been there long enough to be killed. It's been less than a month. That was the hardest part to accept about the whole thing. I had no problem accepting the fact that he was killed, because war, that happens. But he was there in such a short time. Um, Memorial Day has taken on a new meaning for me. Like a lot of people, I'm sure, they used to take Memorial Day for granted. Another day off, a paid, paid holiday off, it didn't have any meaning to me. It does now, and I have a great appreciation, appreciation for the people who serve, especially for the Vietnam veterans who weren't treated kindly when they returned. My heart goes out to them. I can't imagine the pain they went through when they came home. Considering I know how the pain is now for me and my family, which is why I attend every Memorial Day service and any other services I, I can go to in, in the city for veterans. I still have a tough time when they play taps, on occasion when the national anthem is being played. But I appreciate Congressman Keating's efforts to get this Purple Heart replaced so quick. I understand from his aide, James Quigley, that usually takes two or three weeks was a week ago today that the news people reached out to me, and here we are a week later, and I have the Purple Hut again, and now I have a Purple Hut coin again. I appreciate all what's been done for me and my, my filming over this tragic incident. Thank you very much. This problem is so hard. This stinks. If I could only get some help. 
Do you need help with your homework? Uh, duh. Well, tune in to Homework Helpers on our educational channel 17, Monday through Thursday at 5 o'clock p.m. Homework Helpers is a live call-in show where teachers are on hand to solve a specific homework problem. Just call 508-979-1600 with your academic problem. Or call 508-979-1760 to leave a message. You can also email them at homeworkhelpers at newbeffordschools.org. It's that easy. Hello, homework helpers? I really need help with my math homework. No problem. We can help you with that. Great. Thanks so much. Uh, Mom? Yes? I've been thinking about it, and I'm not going to go to college. What are you saying? You've got to go to college. Well, they offered me a job, and I want to buy some new stuff, like uh, a new phone, a car. Son, college is much more important than a new car. No, Mom, it isn't. Yes, son, it is. No. Yes. <sighs> no, Mom. <laughs> Anyways, it's my decision. Your decision. Okay, well then decide what degree you're going to get because you will go to college. Their tomorrow depends on your words today. The Hispanic Scholarship Fund has the information you need to help your kids go to college and have a better future. I hope you find a home. I hope you find a home.